Hey enthusiasts, how are you doing? Welcome back, I hope you're all having a great day. So today's video, we are gonna start cleaning up the engine, replacing gaskets, replacing some components, ready for it to go back in the engine bay. We've got to that point now where it's ready to do. So over the last weeks and months, I've been ordering up various bits and bobs which I think I need. I'm sure I've probably forgot some stuff, but just as a reminder, the Mayfair has done 12,000 miles. So we're not doing a full engine strip down. Uh, we had the cylinder head off and Paul Jeffries kindly helped me out with that and took it along to MJA Motorsport where it was fully cleaned. It's all been checked. All the valve seats have been recut and it's had hardened valve seats put in there and obviously the valves and everything put back in because it wouldn't have originally been for unleaded fuel. So that's been converted for unleaded now. Um, and then we're just gonna do some sort of, uh, some gearbox gaskets as we go along. Now, I'm a little bit nervous about the automatic gearbox. I've trained as an automotive technician. I've got qualifications for it, but automatic gearbox are generally a specialist job. Uh, and they are a mini, not many people like to touch them. Um, yeah, so I'm not gonna to go too deep on the automatic gearbox, but I am just gonna replace some gaskets. I've tried finding out as much as information as I can about the automatic, but it's difficult to get information about. So the owner's manual, the Haynes manual, the Bible that everyone refers to, will talk about removing and refitting the gearbox, but it doesn't talk about stripping the gearbox apart itself. I have got some literature which a uh, subscriber and a viewer kindly gave me before Christmas. I think it was David Germany. And this was actually his product training on the AP1 and AP2 automatic gearboxes. Now, mini gearboxes, as much as people don't like them, they are very, very good. When they work right, they're phenomenal compared to something like an early CVT type gearbox. And you just didn't see cars with small engined and automatic gearboxes they just didn't go but in the mini it worked pretty well and when they do work they are fantastic but they do have issues where the engine oil is the same oil that the gearbox runs on so of course when that oil gets dirty and contaminated it can damage the gearbox so they can be quite tough on engine oil but at the time they were made they were way ahead of their time. So we're gonna have a go at doing some gaskets. I've got the, uh, like the front cover gasket. I think the main valve block sits behind that. I don't think that's gonna be too difficult to do. I was looking on some, a website online uh, that does all automatic gearbox bits. I'll put a link in the description. There's an oil seal on the front of there. We're gonna do the drive shields, drive shaft seals, which are pretty standard. We are gonna do the, end cover seal. Um, I hope that's pretty straightforward. I don't know a great deal about that. Gear shift selector seals. I've actually got three. Alex Toon donated them because he had a mini auto at some stage. So we're gonna do the gear shift selector seal, different from a manual gearbox. Um, and then just things like the speedo pinion seal, uh, speedo pinion gasket, oil filter housing gasket, and yeah, as well as that, obviously we're gonna put a new water pump on just because it's sensible to do. Um, new oil filter, but we're not gonna go, and obviously a new head gasket, but we're not gonna go that deep into stripping the engine and gearbox down because they worked absolutely fine before I took it apart. And yeah, I, I've not driven Project Tardis much, but when I did drive it, I just made sure everything worked. Now a unique feature of the mini automatic gearbox is that the early ones could be toe started. Now I can't think of another automatic gearbox on any car that you can toe start. Correct me if I'm wrong, if anyone knows for definite. You hear lots of urban myths and that sort of thing, but 
I always thought it was a bit of an urban myth on minis, but I was actually reading through David's training notes here, and when you look at the layout of the gearbox, it actually has a toe start valve within the gearbox, and it actually gives instructions for how to toe start. It only relates to the earlier gearboxes. I think it was uh, pre... Oh, I'm trying to find it now. It was only the earlier gearboxes, so don't try this on a later gearbox because it might not work. But these are actually David's handwritten notes and he's put um, uh, tow to a minimum speed of 20 miles an hour and then select second gear, slightly depress the throttle. Um, yeah, it's quite amazing that. I I'm not going to try it. <laughs> like I say, it's, it does say in there for earlier mini auto gearboxes, but I'm not aware of any other automatic gearbox in the world that you can toe start, but please do correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. Right, let's um, turn the camera around. Let's have a look at the engine. Right, so we've actually got the engine crane out again. Um, it survived the winter, the ram's still working. I should have taken the ram off and bought it indoors actually, because they do rust when they're sitting outside. Um, bad me. But uh, yeah, got the engine crane out because believe it or not, even with the head off, that engine is so, so heavy. It, 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 you can't do, one man can't lift that. So I'm gonna use the engine crane to help me. I was in two minds whether to put the cylinder head back on now because I've got this, the obviously the proper lifting bracket, um, but obviously you would normally use that with a cylinder head on. So I'm gonna give it a try with a cylinder head off. Uh, I'm sure as you will worry like me that that'll bend those studs. These are old studs, don't worry about that. These are some old ones I dug out. But um, yeah, I'm sure it should be fine. But if not, I'll give it a try. I'll see how it balances. If it doesn't balance for whatever reason, we'll clean it up and put the head back on. But we're just gonna get this all cleaned off now. It's really just grimy, dirty. I think the, that's the only thing I haven't got. I haven't got the timing chase chain cover gasket or front crank pulley oil seal. I should probably do them, so I might have to get them ordered up. I think I've got everything else though. Um, we're gonna be doing this front cover gasket here. We're gonna be doing that end cover gasket. We're gonna be doing the drive shaft seals. So if anyone knows these AP gearboxes, I believe this is an AP2. Uh, it doesn't have park on it. Some of the later ones had park. So I'm gonna be removing this front cover. I think it's quite straightforward. There's a O-ring in there, which I believe goes around there. Apart from that, it should be just a gasket. Please shout in the description if I'm gonna do something wrong though before I do. Uh, and the other bit is this end cover here where the speedo drive goes in. I don't know, what, again, what that contains. So I'm kind of doing this and finding out as I go here because there isn't a great deal of information available online about the mini automatic gearboxes. So if you know, <laughs> and there's a reason not to take that off, then please shout and let me know. But aside from that, let's get it up on the crane and then I'll show you how we're just gonna get this all cleaned off, ready to be stripped. Right, I'm sure some people will ask, so what we're gonna to use to clean the engine with, mainly, is just elbow grease. But what I use to try and dissolve the grease a bit is just some gunk engine degreasant, brush on type. It's cheapest in these bigger cans. You can buy it in spray cans. You can buy green gunk, which is a bit more environmentally friendly, etc. I don't know, but this stuff seems to work the best. It's the old original gunk, two and a half liters. I think it costs about eight quid or something like that. And it's water soluble that. I then put that in a pressure sprayer. It must be like a solvent types pressure sprayer because it will just knacker the seals up if it's just like a garden water sprayer, plant sprayer. And the great thing about this is you can pump it up, get quite a bit of pressure in there. You can adjust the nozzle on the end and get a nice fine mist out of it. You don't have to spray loads and loads of this on, just a nice fine mist to damp it down. And then you give it about 10 minutes to sort of work its way into the grease and grime, and then just a series of brushes. So I've got my wife's toothbrush there, she never minds me using that. Um, a stiff paintbrush that's just been cut down a little bit, and for the really grimy bits, uh, just a wire brush. Um, it's a quite a small wire brush. 
remember your PPE uh, goggles because when you start agitating this around, it, it does get in your eye. I don't know whether it, it doesn't blind you. I've done it plenty of times, forgotten to do it, but it does sting a bit. It's probably not best for you. And uh, yeah, just some gloves. It's quite a messy job. Now, uh, let's just have a quick look at the engine. Oh, let's have a look at TARDIS as we go past actually. So the one thing about covering cars up, if you ever get bored of your minis, like you do, you lose a bit of mojo and that sort of thing, just cover them up for a few weeks. And when you uncover them, you just go, wow, doesn't that look great? You, you forget about all the bad bits <laughs> and it just makes you feel better. So yeah, don't TARDIS look great. So we've got the engine hoisted up now covered up all the holes we don't want um, gunk going down the distributor drive hole we don't want it getting down the bores or anything like that and let's just kind of see a before and after i guess it's quite grimy on the front it's a lot more grimy on the rear i mean this is really thick on the back here but i think i might have mentioned in previous episodes this is just like it's oily dust i think this car sat in a really dusty workshop and was probably started up once a week and the valve chest um, gaskets were leaking. They would just drip down a little bit of oil across the back, more dust, bit more oil, more dust, bit more oil. And that's how it's got really thick and grimy down the back there because it hasn't done many miles. Some people have asked before if I'm gonna do the core plugs. I'm not gonna do the core plugs. From an earlier video, I haven't got my light with me, inside the engine, it's absolutely spotless. The back of the core plugs are shinier than the front. So I don't really see the point in doing them. Um, I could fit a core plug and then it would leak. It might leak, unlikely, but yeah. If it doesn't need doing, why do it? So um, yeah, let's put it on time lapse and let's get this gunk on and uh, see how much better it looks. Right, this is gonna be a messy job. So like I say, gloves on, goggles. I've got uh, some towels which match the floor coloring in the garage. That is coincidental. Uh, first coat, we're just gonna spray on a light mist. We're not gonna agitate it yet, just a light mist, get it soaked and then leave it for 10 minutes before we do anything else.
Right, so that's the messy bit. For the next part, all we've got is, is just hot water, just off boiling in one of these pressure sprayers. They are all, all right with really hot water. And then we'll pump it up and we're just spraying, it's just plain water, but it's, uh, it's probably gonna be about 70, 80 degrees. And uh, well, let's see how we get on. Right, so there we go. I think that's probably it for today's video. That is just looking infinitely better though. And, you know, I didn't have to clean it now. I've got some gaskets to replace. I could have waited, but it's so much nicer working on a clean engine. I hate working on a dirty engine. So, um, yeah, that's taken me, I don't know, probably with the filming and a little bit. Uh, like I say, it's all about elbow grease. It's probably taken a couple of hours uh, and it's cost, I was probably wrong on the price of gunk, it's 14 quid from Halfords for two and a half litres, but I don't think, I reckon I probably used half to three quarters of a litre on that. As I say, what really gets it off is allowing the gunk to sort of soak into the grime and then having that really hot water, as you'd have seen at the end there, it was just coming out as steam. So it's like steam cleaning it. And I do have a pressure washer, so I could have just put this on the driveway and pressure washed it off. But I like to think of my environment, all that dirt and crud and grease and grime that was on that engine, if I pressure washed it off, would have ended up in the drains, wouldn't it? So that's not good. So um, at least this way, I captured it in the trout at the bottom. I can put it in a container and then dispose of it at the tip in the proper oil waste disposal. So that's good. I've got it not sitting on top of the heater, but I've got the heater below it at the moment. I'll be in the garage for another hour. So while I'm here, I might as well just, I've got the heater on anyway. I might as well allow the heater to dry out this engine. An important pit do do is I've replaced all these rags. So the rags where I had them covering holes, I've either taken them out or have replaced them with dry ones because you do not want to leave wet rags inside the pots or the bores or anywhere else for that matter. So yeah, what, however you're going to do it in the end, dry it off, clean the rags off. I um, hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you did, don't forget, give it a thumbs up. It does all help the YouTube algorithm. I don't know what it does, but it does help. And um, if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. And we'll be back again very soon with the next update. And it'll be, I would imagine, we'll be doing gearbox gaskets. Thanks for watching.